Hi there and welcome to another chemistry lesson. We're doing electrochemistry and specifically standard reduction potential in this video. So what is standard reduction potential? Well, in the previous video we looked at uh, something called uh, the half cell and in a half cell was an electrode that is surrounded by an electrolyte solution, the electrolyte. So what electrolyte solution is, is it's an electrolyte in an aqueous solution. What's an electrolyte? Electrolyte is something that ionizes in a electrolyte solution. So the point is that in the solution here, we've got uh, cations and anions. So cations are the important ones um, specifically here because what cations would be doing is they would be pulling electrons from the electrode. Okay, so they would try to get electrons from the electrode and that is called reduction. Reduction means to gain electrons. Okay, so we know that. Now reduction potential is the ability of this cation to gain electrons. So what would happen is the half reaction that the electro the cation okay, would have some sort of positive charge. Okay. He will gain a number of electrons to satisfy that positive charge that he has and that is a reversible reaction. Okay. That's a reversible reaction and it would pro just produce the substance itself. Now this electrode is usually made out of that substance. This is usually out of that substance. So what would happen is as the, the cations are floating around in the solution it gets the electrons from the solution. It's drawn towards those electrons and it actually creates more of this, in this case it would be solid, but it would pr produce more of the solid. It could be this, that my electrode is a gas. We'll look at the hydrogen electrode uh, just now. It could be that it's a gas and so it will produce little gas bubbles of course uh, here at the, at the electrode. But usually this electrode is made up of the substance or the cations. Uh, what is it? standard charge. Okay, but what I want to show you here is the problem is that this is a reversible reaction. Now a reversible reaction has a equilibrium and the equilibrium will be reached very quick and the reason for that is that the moment that this cation gets an electron the whole substance here becomes negative. When this substance becomes negative it will have uh, it will repel the electrons that are being attracted by the cation because it will have more electrons than uh, protons in the, in the total number of electrons and protons in the solution. So it will, it will uh, repel the electrons and so the attraction that this cation will have on electrons will be counted by the repulsion that the solution will have. So um, th this will start happening in that th the substance instead of being able to attract the substance will actually reject the electrons. So um, in order to counter that we will have to have uh, some something adding electrons into the system Okay, but now another thing that's going to happen is the moment that I donate electrons into the system, the electrode itself becomes positive because I've lost an electron, which means the, electro the electrode itself will start attracting electrons again. So that also works against us. So in order for this to be solved, this problem, we'll need to get electrons from another source. Okay, so somehow this thing is connected with a conductor so that as it donates electrons it can get electrons from another source as well. Okay, now um, the other thing that we need to mention is because this is the equilibrium uh, condition or uh, equilibrium reaction there are some conditions. Okay, the conditions depend on the factors that affect the equilibrium. So 
um, what affects equilibrium? Well, it depends what we're working with. In this case, we're working with a solution. Okay, so we have to consider the concentration. Concentration. Okay, uh, the concentration of the solution. The second thing that affects it is the temperature. Temperature. And sometimes, as we will see later, my electrode can be a gas. And if my electrode is a gas, then obviously pressure is also a factor. So what we're going to say is that we are going to use standard, the standard conditions. Now under standard conditions, concentration is one molar. Okay, one molar which means for every one mole of solution, we have one mole of electrolyte, okay? Uh, temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and pressure is one atmosphere. Pressure. Okay, so these would be the standard conditions under which we are going to uh, conduct these experiments. Now, the other thing that's now important to know is that what we want to go and measure, that the standard reduction potential talks about what is each, each cation that I can imagine. What is their ability to reduce an electrode? Or it doesn't really reduce the electrode, it reduces something else because it's getting these electrons from somewhere. Now, when you get electrons from somewhere, it obviously depends on how badly does that thing that I'm getting it from want to keep it. So when we say standard reduction potential, it does become very important to note that I'm getting my electrons from somewhere, which means my reduction potential is compared to something else. Does that make sense? So we're going to look at a standard reduction potential. What that means is we're going to use a standard. We're going to look at, at something like copper 2 plus. What's its ability to gain electrons? Zinc 2 plus. What's its ability to gain electrons? Okay, uh, etc. There's, there's, there's plenty that we're going to look at. These two become very important later on. Uh, they've, they're very popular in electrochemistry. But we have to measure their ability to reduce against the standard. The, st the standard that we're going to choose is called hydrogen. We're going to use the hydrogen electrode. Now this is what the hydrogen electrode looks like. Hydrogen is obviously a gas. So what's going to happen is that we somehow need hydrogen to connect with the electrolyte or somehow hydrogen must make contact with the electrolyte um, and hi it's um, hydrogen itself is quite stable so we also need a a platinum catalyst catalyst Okay, now my sketch is not perfect, but what's going to happen is hydrogen is going to be passed into, into here. And in my solution, I will have hydrogen ions. Okay, so what produces hydrogen ions in solutions? Well, an acid. So in other words, this is, is, is an acidic solution, an acidic solution that is one mole per, um, well, according to our standard, uh, one mole, one molar solution okay so what is going to happen is that when hydrogen is passed into here just notice that this is a test tube kind of shape and it's going to push the level when I when I pass hydrogen in here it's going to push this level a little bit down it's a little bit difficult for me to show you but eventually we will have that the that the the level of the hydrogen let me, let me do it like this the level of the hydrogen has pushed the electrolyte solution out of the test tube okay so it comes out here and then what will happen is that at this point we will have here at this corner right here we will have hydrogen 
the electrolyte, so there would be hydrogen gas in this corner, electrolyte, let's do it in a different color, hydrogen gas would be in this corner, we have electrolyte solution in this corner, you can't see it, let's do it in yellow, electrolyte solution in this corner, and then we have the the catalyst there. So here's the connection point for all of them. And so at this point, there is contact helped by the um, by the platinum catalyst with the electrolyte. And so in the electrolyte, there would be a pull on the hydrogen gas in order to get electrons from. Okay. Now, if it successfully does that, if it can get electrons from from the system, it will start producing little bubbles of hydrogen because as hydrogen gets the electrons, okay, he will it will start forming little bubbles at this point producing more hydrogen. So, that's the idea, but as we said, he can it can't do it by itself. It needs to be getting the electrons. So what happens here is where is the electrons coming from? Well, they're coming from a, a, an external circuit that is connected to another, another source. Now, in this source, this is going to be a different substance. Okay, now as we said, we are going to measure we're actually trying to get the elect the reduction potential of this element but let's for a moment assume that I am I've got the exact same thing happening here in other words hydrogen the hydrogen half cell this that's what this is called let's say I've got the hydrogen half cell always also on this side okay I also told you that we need to have something adding positive charges in here because what's happening is my um, I'm gaining electrons into the solution because I'm gaining electrons into the solution I am losing I, I'm, I'm getting a negative charge and in order to get a positive charge I need to replenish positive charges in here so somehow something needs to be contributed a positive charge needs to be contributed in other words, cations. Cations needs to be contributed in here, and then what would happen on this side is completely the opposite. Because electrons are drawn towards this side, okay, electrons are being pulled out of this solution, which means we need to add anions in this solution. So what, what they use in order to produce cations and anions in these solutions is cations and anions together produce a salt a salt so they have a salt bridge and now you can see what we have is we have a circuit in the circuit we have an attractive um, force of electrons on the one side but we have exactly the same thing on the other side we have an attractive force of electrons on this side and it all depends on between these two cathode uh, sorry these two uh, electrodes which one has the strongest pull on the electrons let's just for a moment assume it's it's uh, the hydrogen electrode then this the electrons would be pulled in this direction and there we've got our complete circuit but now for for the sake of my first point I just want to, to say what if this was also the hydrogen half cell in other it, it doesn't look like it but imagine it was exactly the same procedure set up here and there then we would have ex absolutely no electrons flowing so how would we measure the flow of electrons it's not really the flow of electrons that we want to measure we want to measure the ability to attract electrons the pull the strength where, where with these electrons are drawn and to do that we will use Will this work? Yeah. To do that, we will use a voltmeter. A voltmeter me measures the amount of energy that each electron has. Not really each electron, every coulomb of electron. So this is a voltmeter. It measures joules per 
coulomb. So the amount of energy that a coulomb of electrons have. A coulomb is a, a collective name for a group of electrons. So the, a voltmeter will take a whole group of electrons and measure how much energy do you have. A voltmeter also takes the difference of the um, the energy at this point and the energy at that point. So this is potential difference. Now if I have hydrogen on this side and I've got hydrogen on that side then obviously my voltmeter would read zero volts. There is no difference between the attractive pull on this side and the attractive pull on that side. Okay, does that make sense? Because it's the same it's the same unit they have or the same element. They have the same conductive pull on both sides. Um, which now brings me to my next conclusion is that if I had hydrogen Okay, hydrogen is one plus. To, for it to gain one electron to become H2. Okay, so two of these will require two electrons to become one uh, hydrogen. Now, for this to happen, the standard electron standard reduction potential this is the symbol we use for standard reduction potential is zero volts so again standard means i'm comparing it to something um, hydrogen is compared to itself the difference between the pull that hydrogen have and that hydrogen have is zero volts difference the reading that we will have on there is zero volts so this becomes the standard. Now all other elements standard reduction potential is compared to hydrogen. So for example let's say we have copper. So let's change this is not we're not going to use hydrogen here we're going to use copper. Will that work? Okay we're going to use copper and so this is now going to be copper. So let's imagine that we have copper is our our other electrode. Now the question is which one will attract stronger because obviously this is not this salt bridge only does what it's supposed to do only produces cations in here if this becomes a negative solution and anions in here if this is becoming a positive solution so the question does become which one has a stronger pull on electrons in this in this situation so this is to uh, copper which means in my electrolyte solution i need copper 2 plus. Now copper can be uh, 2 plus, it can be 1 plus, it can be 3 plus. It's a trans a transition metal which means it doesn't have a standard charge itself. It can have different charges. So we're just going to look at copper 2 plus. Now in the experiments this is what is found that when this was done under the standard conditions, when you do this under standard conditions, this is what you read off. You read off 0, 0,34 volts. That's the reading on the voltmeter. Now th these, because it's experimental results, are recorded in a table and that table is called the standard uh, uh, standard electrode potentials. Okay, And on that table you can then go read what each cation's ability would be to attract the electrons. So the cation uh, copper 2 plus, his ability to attract electrons would be 0, 0,34 volts. Now what that means, if it's a positive reading, it means that copper is has a bigger reduction potential than hydrogen. If we were to, comp to put hydrogen and copper in what is called, this is called a galvanic cell, galvanic cell, okay, if 
then the voltmeter reading would be 0.34 volts. Now let's just see what is happening. Because copper it has a bigger pull on the electrons, electrons will start flowing in this direction. Okay, when electrons start flowing in this, in this direction, the copper, this is what will happen with the copper. Copper 2 plus will get two electrons, okay, and produce and produce copper, pure copper. Now that pure copper will start forming a layer on this electron. Okay, so we'll get start forming a layer on this electron. As the copper here is getting electrons from the electrode, it sticks to that electrode, forming a layer, an extra layer of copper on here. Now because we are losing positive, um, oh, sorry, because we are gaining electrons, in the solution, the solution becomes negatively charged, which means we need anions to, uh, if it becomes uh, negatively charged, we need cations, sorry, we need cations coming from the salt bridge. Okay, so the salt bridge is going to donate back into the system cations to keep it neutral. Okay. On the other side, however, electrons are being drawn. So remember the, the connection here, Okay. Hydrogen is now being uh, being used as the source of electrons. So hydrogen is coming in. Electrons are are taken from hydrogen, which means hydrogen donates into the system because this is a reversible reaction. And notice when electrons. So what's happening? Let me write it here. What's happening on this side is that hydrogen is losing electrons. In other words, the 2 plus E just goes to the other side. The plus 2 E, I mean, goes to the other side. And so hydrogen loses electrons to produce hydrogen ions. So hydrogen ions are released into this solution. And that's interesting because that means the solution is becoming more acidic but it also then becomes positively charged because I'm getting cations. And now to counter that positive charge, we will introduce anions in here from the salt bridge. Remember, salt bridge is a cation and anion a compound, an ionic compound. Okay, so that's what's happening. But what is important is you will notice this copper is being, is being reduced. Copper is being reduced. Why? Because it's gaining electrons. Hydrogen is losing electrons, which means hydrogen is oxidized. Hydrogen is oxidized. So this is the oxidation half reaction happening here. And that is the reduction half reaction. Now one last thing that I want to mention is the um, the names of the electrodes. When we have these things happening, okay, the, the electrode from which the e electrons are coming, and here we can see when if it's if it's positive, if the reading is positive, then the electrons are coming from the hydrogen cell towards the copper uh, the copper cell in the outside of the system, obviously not in the inside of the system. The electrons are coming from this side. Would, that would give this one the name of anode. So the anode is the one that is kind of donating the electrons to the cathode. An anode and a cathode. So the anode is the one from which the electrons are flowing outside in the outside part of this circuit and the cathode is the one into which the electrons um, are flowing. Another way of looking at it is remember current is in the opposite direction as electron flow. So you'll see a lot of people when they define the anode, they define the anode as the one that produces current, the one where the current flows into the electrolyte and you can see, so if, uh, if the current is in this in blue, I put the current in blue, then which of the two electrodes have a current flowing into the electrolyte? That's the 
anode because the current is going into the so so it's going into the electrolyte and so the current is flowing out from the from the electrolyte into the cathode and f um, from the anode into the electrolyte does that make sense I hope it does finally let me just go and look at at, at one more thing and um, because it becomes important a little bit later zinc zinc 2 plus for it to get two electrons to become zinc it's standard it, um, if we put zinc in here instead of copper in other words we've got zinc ions in here we notice that the flow of electrons is indeed in the opposite direction which means hydrogen has a bigger pull on the electrons than zinc has the reading on the voltmeter in other words the standard reduction potential if we compare it with hydrogen will be negative 0 0.76 so i just wanted to show you another example where it was positive 3.4 0 0.34 if it was flowing towards the um the thing i'm comparing in other words away from hydrogen and it is negative if it's flowing towards hydrogen which means that the standard reduction potential of zinc is that so now if we have the difference and you know what I think I'll, I'll talk more about comparing copper and zinc now specifically in the next video when we specifically will look at a cell a galvanic cell that's what we call this whole system set up like this with a voltmeter and current flowing because of the reduction potential of elements but in the next video I'll look at specifically copper and zinc what will happen what will the voltmeter reading be if we just put them in even without doing the actual experiment can we maybe get a theoretical value yes we can I'll see you in the next video where we talk about that thank you for watching this video on the standard reduction potential of elements as they compared to hydrogen see you there